In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's my custom at SEAL to tell a story at our morning service on Christmas Day instead of preaching a sermon. And this year will be no exception. In fact, there'll be even more stories this year because if you check back on our website any time after five o'clock from Boxing Day to January the 6th, you'll find an audio recording of one of those stories I've told in the past, a different one each day to take us through the 12 days of Christmas, so you can listen to them whenever you want to. Anyway, here is this year's story, and it's the story of Brother Froilan. There was once a monk called Brother Froilan. He lived in Cantabria in northern Spain way back in the 9th century, over a thousand years ago. In that part of Spain, although there were Christians like Froilan in some of the towns and cities, the Christian faith was unknown to the people who lived in the high mountains, where communities were isolated and life was hard. Brother Froilan felt that God was calling him to go and serve these people and bring the good news of his love to them. So, full of faith and energy, his brother monks sent him off, and he set off quite alone into the most distant parts of that rugged and mountainous terrain. Eventually he found himself a good spot, just outside a little village, and built a small, simple hut to live in. It was very basic, but it would do. And surely, he thought, the villagers would be as excited by the story of God's love as he was, and would be eager to hear it, eager to know that God welcomed them and loved them, that they were part of his family. But it wasn't so. Their lives were tough and busy. It was enough of a struggle just to get by, never mind listening to Froilan's new ideas or thinking about the deeper things in life. They were suspicious of him, as they would have been of any newcomer. They didn't get very many visitors, and it usually wasn't good news when they did. Tax collectors, soldiers, invaders, nothing good ever came of it. And what did Froilan have to offer them that they needed anyway? He didn't even know how to raise animals and grow crops like they did. No one was interested in Froilan. The villagers ignored him completely, treated him as if he just wasn't there. Froilan became very sad and dejected. He felt like a fool. What was the point? Why had he ever come here? What did he think he was doing? He was wasting his time. Day after day, Froilan sat outside his little hut, saying his prayers, asking God whether he shouldn't just give up and go back down the mountain to where there were people who wanted to hear his message. As he prayed, he whittled away with his knife at small twigs and branches that he'd picked up here and there. He was good at carving. It was the only practical thing he was good at. But what use was it? Still, he didn't like to have idle hands, so he carved as he prayed, and he prayed as he carved. One day, as he was praying and carving, he was so deep in his own misery that he didn't notice a couple of pair of eyes peeping through a nearby bush. He didn't notice as first one small child from the village, and then another, and another, and another, crept closer and closer towards him. He didn't notice until one of them suddenly piped up. Here, mister, what are you making? Froilan looked up with a start. There in front of him was a cluster of grubby-looking children from the village who'd been watching his hands as they carved away at the wood. Froilan was so surprised he didn't know what to say at first. He looked down at his hands. He'd been so lost in his prayers that he didn't really know what he'd been carving. But there in his hands was a woman, and straight away he knew who she was. This, he said to the children, is Mary. Who's she then? they asked. Froilan picked up another bit of wood and began to carve again, as he told them about this woman who lived in a town called Nazareth and was good and kind. And then one day, he said, God sent an angel to her. What's an angel? the children asked. 
a messenger from God, strange and beautiful, said Froilan, like this. And he showed them the winged creature he'd been carving as he talked. He picked up a third bit of wood. The angel told Mary she was expecting a baby, who she would call Jesus. He would be the Son of God, and he would show people how much he loved them. But first, the angel had to tell Joseph, the man Mary was going to marry. And at that point, Froilan produced from his expert hands the figure of a man. Froilan carried on carving and talking, talking and carving, as he explained how Mary and Joseph had had to travel to Bethlehem because of the whim of a distant ruler who wanted to know how many people he had in his lands and extract some money out of them, even if they didn't have any. The children understood that. Their parents had complained about that sort of thing often enough. But when Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem, said Froilan, there was no room. And when the child was born, he had to be put down to sleep in a manger, an animal's feeding trough, in a room shared with animals. The children understood that too. Many of them shared their homes with animals and had to bed down wherever they could find a space. Then Froilan carved some sheep and some shepherds, who they recognised because their families kept sheep on the hillsides too. They were the first to hear the news of Jesus' birth, said Froilan. The angels told them as well. What? Ordinary shepherds, like our mums and dads, like us? That's right, said Froilan. Finally, he carved some strangely dressed foreigners bearing gifts. The children had never seen their like before. They peered at them this way and that way. Froilan told them how they'd come from a long way away to see the child. As far away as you came from? No, much further than that, said Froilan. But Mary and Joseph welcomed them too, even though they seemed so strange. That was the message Jesus came to bring, that God loved everyone, whether they were poor or rich, from nearby or far away. Whoever you were, you were welcome, said Froilan. The children were enthralled, and the next day they came back and asked Froilan to tell them the story again. But they insisted he carved a whole new set of figures as he did so, and the next day they were back again with the same request. Day after day they came to Froilan, until soon he had so many sets of nativity figures in his hut he could hardly move. The feast of Christmas was coming near. Froilan knew it would be a sad and lonely Christmas for him. He usually celebrated it in church with his brother monks in the town where he'd come from, but there'd be no one to celebrate with up here in the mountains. Apart from these children, no one knew or cared about his Christian feast. But then Froilan thought of those children, and he had an idea. On Christmas Eve, as darkness descended, he loaded all the figures he'd made into a bag, and he set out quietly around the village. All night long he worked, going from one house to another, one street to another, around the fields and the farms, as quietly as he could, so no one would notice him. In the morning, the morning of Christmas Day, but a morning just like any other to the villagers, of course, everyone opened their doors, and they found that on the doorstep, or the windowsill, or in a niche in a wall, or in the crook of a tree, there were little figures, a tiny woman, a man, a baby, a winged creature, a shepherd, a sheep, an exotic foreigner with a gift in his hands, scattered all over the village. What on earth was it about? They had no idea. But of course, the children knew. This one is Mary, said one of the children, finding a little woman. And here's Joseph, said another. Who, said their parents? The children told them about how they had nowhere to stay, nowhere to have their baby. These are shepherds, just like us, who heard a wonderful message when they were out in their fields by night. And here's the angel that came from God with good news, said the children. And these, these are foreigners from far away, who were made welcome, even though they were so very different from Mary and Joseph. 
the children's eyes shone with excitement as they gathered up all the little figures and told the story to their parents again and again. They'd heard it so often from Fräulein that it had become their own story, a story about their fears and hopes and dreams. And as they told it, in their own words, from the heart of their own lives, their parents listened as they never would have done to Fräulein and they heard its message of hope for themselves. And before long, Fräulein found that both he and his message were welcomed and respected in that village and the villages all around it, and he was never forgotten. And in time he became known as Saint Fräulein, and still to this day he's the patron saint of Cantabria, celebrated in those mountains where he first told the story of the love of God. Amen.